The commit processing. So when we're doing a commit, how does that work? So first, prepare for the commit, wait for the commit token. There's some gem commit actions, then some stone commit actions. We'll look at these in detail. So prepare to commit. Place all new and changed objects on a fresh page in the shared page cache. So the gem has some temporary objects or modified objects. It gets a free frame. It gets a free page. Puts that space into the shared page cache. Copies across. Generates a preliminary transaction log record that's passed to the stone. And the stone can actually write it immediately because it will later on put in something in the log that says either commit or abort. So we can create the log and write it out. Then the gem requests the commit token. Please give me the commit token so that I can do a commit. And the stone says, well, we'll have to wait until someone else is done because, you know, you have to wait in line. Or it just passes. Once you have the commit token, the gem has to validate the right set. Okay? This is the big part of it, and this is where the commit record backlog is the problem. What we need to do is ask, the gem asks, have any objects I changed been changed by someone else since I began my transaction? If so, then we have a conflict. If not, then we don't have a conflict. So, I'll fail. So, this is where my commit record and all the ones after me come into play. I have to look at every commit record after my commit record that I'm, my old commit record, the one that I'm based on. I look at every commit record after the one I started with and say, has anyone written any of the objects I plan to write? If so, then there's a conflict. Once we pass that check, then I have to check locks. Have any objects I modified been locked? Does someone else have a lock on them? If so, then I can't modify them. My commit fails due to a lock conflict. So I have to look through all the things I plan to write and see if anyone else has them locked. If this fails, if I can't commit, then I go back to the stone with the token and say, you know that transaction I was working on? Forget it. Don't bother. Put in an abort record saying that transaction is not valid. If I succeed passing the various checks, then I need to build a new commit record. This commit record is going to have the objects that we've written. We send a commit token and then return the commit record for the transaction log and then a commit token back to the stone. So this is our way of saying the commit succeeded. We validated there aren't any conflicts and there aren't any right, right con lock conflicts. Once the stone receives the commit request, then it will have to flush the tran logs. So the transaction records that we have generated need to get flushed to the tran logs. And we were discussing this during the break. We don't actually have to flush the pages that contain the objects from the shared page cache to the disk. All we need to do is flush the tran log. So description of changes and a final commit or abort record. Then the stone, when it's finished the tran log, it will send back a notice saying, your commit is now succeeded. So the gem starts a commit, but it doesn't come back to the application and say the commit succeeded until the final report from the stone saying your commit succeeded. 